Hi, welcome back. This is now the the remake of the recap video of chapter three. Okay, chapter three. Here we are going to talk about the first law of thermodynamics. All right. So the first law. Okay, uh, back in chapter one when we talk about fluid mechanics, we learn of the conservation of mass. Right. Now the first law is is basically a conservation of energy okay so the idea is this um, uh, you remember when we are talking about open and closed systems you have initial and final okay it goes from a beginning state to a final state okay or you have an open system you, you go from in to out um, during this process from the first to the second something is going to happen and that something Okay, will be in the form of work and heat. Okay, so in order to uh, do some calculations, okay, uh, be able to understand the the, the system, uh, you can use the conservation of energy to find out about these quantities. Okay, so uh, right off the bat, okay, the first law, the first form of the first law is this. Okay. Heat transferred minus work is equals to change in internal energy. Okay, and this is U two minus U one. Okay, we we call these the non-flow energy equation. Okay, N F E E, and this is usually used mainly for closed systems. Okay, so what it says is this. Okay, from the your internal energy at the final minus the internal energy at the initial. This change right in internal energy is accounted for by the heat and the work done into the uh, system or into the fluid. Okay? So this is heat. Okay? And this is work. Uh, one very important thing that you need to know is that there it can, they, they can exist in negative and po or positive forms. Okay, when the heat is positive, okay, it means that the fluid actually gains the heat. Okay, so for this case, the air will gain the heat. Okay, heat gain. And if it is negative, it is a heat lost. Heat lost uh, to the surroundings. Okay. When work is positive, okay, it means that the air is the fluid is actually doing work, okay. Uh, work done by fluid, okay. So uh, and then negative. I'm just going to explain this first. So this is actually not work done by the fluid, but it's work done on the fluid, okay. So if, again, we if we look at the piston. I have for this scenario to happen there needs to be a, an external force to push the to push the piston down right so when the, the force pushes the piston down work is not done by the air okay work is done by somebody else okay it is done by something on the air so in a compression stage right work is actually negative okay so, but if we reverse this situation, initially, let's say initially, it is in this smaller volume state, and then uh, the air starts to expand, okay, starts to push the boundary, and the piston get pushed upwards, okay. So from beginning to here, you can see that the air is actually doing work. So this will be work done by the air, okay. So when you talk about expansion, uh, usually we relate to work done by the fluid okay so that this is the difference here okay however I want to highlight one important thing that is this okay when work is done by the fluid right it is called work output okay because it is an output ma. it is an output from the fluid ma. Uh, but when work is done on the fluid you are providing an input into the fluid so this is a work input is negative, work output is positive. But if you look at the heat, right, it's a bit complex. Huh? So, okay. 
if you look at the heat, right, the heat input is the heat input into the fluid. Okay, so this is actually input. And the heat that is lost is called the heat output. So it's sort of opposite. Lah, and you really just have to uh, remember to be to, to, to remember the differences. Alright. Okay, so this is about uh, the closed system energy equation. The open system okay, uh, energy equation is slightly more complex. Okay, so when we look at the open system uh, from chapter 2, as it comes in, it is going something is going to happen in within this boundary. Okay. It can be in terms of a work. Or some heat can be provided to to the system. Okay, so something is going to happen, and then the outlet will come will, will will be produced that is different state from the inlet. Okay, so the equation will be something like this. You're gonna get half uh, mass. Uh, this is a uh, flow speed, okay, half m c in square. So c is flow speed, right? So this is actually kinetic energy, okay, plus mass g z in. This is your potential energy, okay, plus enthalpy, okay, plus q, which is the heat uh, in the system, okay. It's going to be half C out, half mass C out square plus mg z out, which means this is the potential kinetic outlet, potential outlet, enthalpy outlet, and the work that is happening in the system. Okay, so this is your what we call the steady flow energy equation SFE. All right, this only applies for open system. Uh, if you divide by mass throughout the entire equ equation, you get the specific level. Okay, half. Let's say in is one, out is two. You get this. And everything becomes small letter because they are all per kilogram basis. This is small w, so this is it. Okay, uh, it may look uh, overwhelming to begin with, but actually, if you look at it this way, right, this is actually a, an equivalent energy state at the inlet. This is actually an equivalent energy state at the outlet, and if you do a bit of manipulation, right, you will actually realize that. It is quite similar to our uh, non-flow energy equation. Okay, so the work and heat accounts for the change in state between the inlet and the outlet. Okay, that is the idea. Anyway, this equation will be given to you. But what is even more important is uh, you remember when we were talking about the three different types of open systems. Okay, pumps, turbines, one class, boilers, condenser, the second class. The nozzles diffuser is the third class of syst open system. Depending on which device you are looking at, which class of device you are looking at, your first law, your SFE can actually be simplified. Okay, so let's take for example pumps and turbines. Okay, um, if you look at the pot potential and kinetic energy, okay, the you shift them to one side, right? It is actually the differences between the potential and the kinetic energy. Okay, what we are trying to say here is that the differences, right, between the inlet and the outlet is actually not as significant as the differences in the enthalpies and the work and the heat. Okay, so usually we will ignore the changes. Okay, we can ignore kinetic energy and potential energy.
Okay, so this is for only for pumps and turbines. Um, there is also one thing we can assume, and that is uh, that if the whole pump and turbine is insulated, okay, then there is no heat transfer. There's no heat gain by the pump and turbine. There's no heat loss by the pump and turbine. Okay, so all there is is the moving blades, right? The moving turbine blades that will account for the work that it performs. Okay, so at the end, right, you're only left with this equation because the rest are are close to zero. So for pumps and turbines, SFPE becomes this form. Okay, for boilers and condensers. Okay, you can also ignore Ke and Pe. Okay, they are not as significant as compared to the other four terms. And uh, boiler and condenser is just uh, exchange of heat between two fluids, right? So actually there are actually no moving parts. Because there are no moving parts, there is no work done. Okay? There is no work involved at all. So there's only Q. So at the end, you are only left with this equation. Alright? So this will be simplified if your, sis your device is either a boiler or a condenser. Okay? And finally for nozzles, or diffuser. Uh, you cannot ignore kinetic energy because the primary function of this device is to change the speed. Okay, and uh, the kinetic energy changes will be significant. So you cannot ignore Ke. You can only ignore Pe. Okay, and because these these de these devices right, they are fixed geometries. Okay. Usually it's something like a cone. There's no move. There's not going to be any moving parts. So your W is zero. Okay. Also, uh, we 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 put things in a more simplified way. You can assume that they will just change in speed. They won't change in their temperatures. Uh, the, 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 um, there won't be any heat being transferred. Okay. So your Q will also be zero. So your equation will then be simplified into this. Okay, so this is for the third class of open systems. Okay, so now um, uh, we've gone through the basis of a system. We've gone through the energy equations, and with this knowledge, right, we can then proceed on to to solve the perfect gas and steam problems. Okay, which will be covered in the other videos. Thank you.